Hi everyone, I'm back. It's been a busy holiday season, haven't had time to get back to the Q&A. Um, this time I'd like to answer a question um, from Gregory in Croatia. Um, it's going to be kind of a maybe a two or three part answer to your question. Um, actually, perhaps over two or three videos. Um, you asked, um, how do you, how would you go about investing in poor? How do you, um, how would you weight the choices that you make? If I were to invest, say, ten thousand dollars in uh, in a in a poor for aging, like ten years, um, what would you recommend that I buy? And how much of the different things? That's a comp that's a pretty complex question, and it really depends a lot on um, you know assuming that you're going to be reselling it in ten years. Um, I think the biggest thing that you would want to do is you'd want to have a variety. Of course, it makes a lot of difference who you're going to be selling it to. You're going to be selling it to people that are already sophisticated um, in regards to poor, or is it going to be just um, you know getting people into poor and needing to have um, teas that are affordable? So um, I'm not going to directly answer your question. What I'm going to do instead, um, and then I'll give you kind of a summary of what I would recommend that you do. Um, but first, what I really wanted to do was, um, was to give a background on the different tea factories and how they were started, a little bit, maybe a little bit of history behind each of them, what are some of the classic um, recipes that they have, um, and which, one, which of their teas I recommend for each tea factory. Some are, some are primarily ripe, poor, poor tea producers, so some are raw, some have both that are worthwhile. Um, I'm going to go over today, I'm going to go over the um, China Native National Products Import Export, also aka Zhongcha, um, Molhai Tea Factory, Xiaguan Tea Factory, Nanjian Tea Factory, um, uh, Longhe Tea Factory, the Fuhai Tea Factory, Mengku Rongshi, aka Xuanjiang Mengku, and also the Xinghai Tea Factory. So um, to start out, the original um, kind of tea factory, I guess you would, would have to be Monghai Tea Factory. Um, of course, there were earlier ones, um, but I don't believe that any of those exist today or are particularly well known. There are some uh, Chushun Hao and Yi Wu and some other ones that are actually predate Monghai Tea Factory, but I'm not going to get into those because those are um, really, you know, not not names that we recognize uh, today um, that are going to be you know widely available teas. Um, so the Monghai Tea Factory uh, was started in in 1938 um, by Fang Hejun and Zhang Shicheng, um, and then um, in 1949 when um, when the new uh, country was established and. It was, it was um, brought under the auspices of the um, CNMP, the Chinese Import-Export Company, um, and produced tea for them. But it was started in 1938, and um, by 1989, they already had the Dai brand, or the Dai logo that was registered. So that's like probably the earliest actual trademarked um, uh, um, logo that's been that's used in regards to poor is Dai and, and as such they're very well known. Um, they were also the first ones to develop um, the Wodwe um, wet piling uh, fermentation process for making uh, ripe poor. Um, so when you see a lot of these recipes um, like uh, um, like 7572 uh, the 75 refers to the um, the year 1975, which is, you know, pretty much one of the first years where they actually produced ripe tea. I don't know if they really produced it in much quantity, but they perfected it, um, at least the modern version of, of what we consider to be wudui, um, ripe poor processing or shu poor. Um, so Monghai has definitely got a lot, you know, a lot of history and a, 
and they've really developed their brand. It's a very, it's, it is a strong brand. It's well known. Um, and because of that, there are also quite a few fakes on the market too, both, both pre, you know, pre 2000s and post 2000s. There's just a ton of, of, um, there's a ton of fake Mahi Tea Factory teas. Um, so what else? The Monghai Tea Factory was privatized, um, fully privatized in late 2004. And um, it's, I believe it is the same company that owns uh, Monghai Tea Factory today. Um, so again, Monghai Tea Factory, well known for ripe pours, um, but also well known for raw pours. Um, some of the, you know, the classic, um, the classic recipe is this, like the 7542 cake. Um, it's a 1975 recipe, an average grade of um, size, average grade of grade four leaves. Um, so it's it's obviously it's a blend of tippier and less tippy leaves um, there. But here I'm holding a, a 19, uh, a 2009 901, which is the first batch of of um, of, of 2009 for the 7542 recipe. Um, typically the first batches, uh, especially for the raw teas like 7542, um, are more sought after and they command a higher price. Although in my experience drinking blind side by side and also with other tea, um, chums in China, um, we haven't found that the, um, the first batch of the year of 7542 or 8582 or the other raws, um, taste any mark a difference from the later batches. Um, so again, I think the, the earlier batches being more expensive as a result of speculation as opposed to a rational um, difference in the quality of the leaves. Um, again, another you know really famous, probably the most well-known um, ripe poor recipe from Monghai Tea Factory 7572. Another one is 7262, which is a cake. Um, yet another is a 7562, which is a brick. Um, my personal two favorites actually aren't the mainstream ones. They're the, my personal favorite is the 0532, which is a tippier Hmong Hai blend, and it first came out in 2005. Um, I also really like um, the 7452, which is... Um, uh, again, an earlier blend, I guess 1974, so it actually predates the 7572 blend. I like that one. Um, V93, the Tuo Cha, is also um, uh, a popular Hmong Hai Tea Factory blend and often very affordable. Um, if I'm pointing people to invest in Hmong Hai Tea Factory teas, um, I tend to say, I tend to, I tend to um, point people in the direction of ripe poor, and I tend to to purchase and sell more ripe pour from Mohai Tea Factory than I do raw pour. And maybe that's because I specialize in raw pour and I, I, I source a higher quality leaf than they do. But it's not to say that um, their, their raw pours um, aren't gonna age well. They will, they're very strong teas um, because they're plantation based, but um, historically they have performed pretty well. And actually I have one customer that um, that likened Hmong Hai Tea Factory uh, teas to like a Honda car and that it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're going to, it's, it's, it's going to deliver on its promise of, of, um, over the years, it might not be a sports car. It might not be, you know, Farvig Nugent to drive compared to a, a BW or a, a VW or a Porsche or whatever, but it's going to perform well. It's going to deliver. So, it's a pretty safe investment. Again, I would tend to avoid the really, um, the really, because Da Yi or Monghai Tea Factory, Tay Tea, they also are called. Um, they do come out with quite a few special products like the Yiwu Zhengshan um, and some of the other like kind of fancy non, non, um, you know, standard blends, both ripe and raw. And they can be very, very expensive, and they can be limited edition. But again, I think the, their limited edition is still, you know, could be 10,000 kilos or 20,000 or 30,000 cakes or sets. I mean, they're, they're mass producing these teas. Um, and, you know, again, it's not a bad thing, but if you're paying 
a premium for one of their so-called limited edition teas or something that's maybe a little bit more rare, um, often I find that it's not worth it because, um, and, and those tend to, a lot of, a lot of those recipes tend to have, um, a lot of those releases tend to have a lot of speculation around them, um, in the Chinese market. And that leads to kind of really can lead to really crazy price fluctuations. Um, so again, I would, I would stick with the basics with the Menghai Tea Factory. Um, again, emphasis on ripe pour. Um, the next tea factory I want to talk about is uh, Xiaoguan Tea Factory, and um, Xiaoguan Tea Factory is not based in Monghai. Um, again, Monghai is based is in Xishuangbanna, in the far south. Um, Xiaoguan is actually in the Dali Prefecture, in the town of well Xiaoguan, um, or Dali as it's also called, um, and that's kind of to the west. That's kind of the northwest part of Yunnan Province. Um, Xiaoguan, um, little history here. Um, Xiaoguan was first started in 1941, so it predates um, the People's Republic of China. The original name of the tea factory was the Kangjiang Tea Factory, and Kang means healthy, and Zang, oh, not Zhang, Kangzang Tea Factory, and uh, it means healthy Tibet. Zhang is the is the is the word uh, the character for Tibet. Uh, at the time, they in the in the early years they were primarily involved in in selling tea to the Tibetan peoples, both in Yunnan, Sichuan, uh, uh, Tibet proper, uh, Gansu, Qinghai, um, for their yak butter teas. So yak butter tea. Um, is was made a lot of it was made with tea from Yunnan was actually um, Yunnan poor so not all of it's not all of it's hei cha or uh, kangjuan from you know from from Sichuan and uh, and Anhui and Hunan um, in fact a lot of it was made by Xiaoguan Tea Factory or rather Kangzheng Tea Factory at that time and in fact the earliest um, some of the earliest uh, productions were Tuo Cha but also um, like this Baoyan or Tibetan Flame, which is a sub-brand of, of Monghai Tea Factory, or I'm sorry, Xiaoguan Tea Factory, um, for export to Tibet. I've actually seen some of these in a museum from the 1950s that were brought, that were brought back from Tibet to, to Kunming um, that were aged in Tibet and produced by the um, Kanzan Tea Factory, now known as the Xiaoguan Tea Factory. So a little bit of history there. Um, uh, let me look here. I don't want to lose my way too much. Um, in 1950, uh, Xiaoguan Tea Factory was renamed to Xiaoguan, and at the time, of course, it came under the auspices of, of the state-owned um, uh, Yunnan Native National Products Import, aka Zhongcha. So, you know, all, a lot of the really early productions were um, were. If you look back and you see some of the the um, the twill and the um, and the cakes from those from those early periods, um, they are in, kind of indistinguishable from um, from other Zhongcha productions, or even a Monghai Tea Factory production, which would also have a Zhongcha label. And again, when I say Zhongcha, I am I am referring to um, to something that looks like this. Uh, this is a '90s Zhongcha production, and um, uh, so you know, again, without being an expert. Um, being able to differentiate um, a 1980s Xiaoguan production from a uh, from a 1980s Monghai Tea Factory production would require definitely some skills and some insight and perhaps a pedigree from the tea or the person who stored it to really differentiate where it came from, you know, because in this early period there were a lot of variations of this wrapper <laughs> And in fact, even now today, this wrapper is being used to create fake teas, um, fake age teas. So, um, Monghai Tea Factory, I'm sorry, Xiaoguan Tea Factory um, sources a lot of material from, from Dali area, mostly the south, the Nanjian area, um, also Wulianshan and Zhenyuan, also a lot of um, tea from northern Linsang, like Yunxian, part of Linsang. Um, and also from Yongping and those areas. 
Xiaoguan has also produced green tea, um, black tea as well um, for export. And in fact, the earliest, um, the earliest tea, poor tea ever exported in quantity to a Western country was the, um, was the famous Xiaofatuo, which as you can see here, it says Te, which is French. Um, and this is, um, of course at the time it, when it was exported, it didn't have this, um, this, this little crane logo, the crane logo. Um, I'm not sure exactly what year it started. I want to say, um, early 2000s, the crane logo, Songhe Pai, as it's called, which is uh, another sub-brand of Monghai Tea Factory. Um, so again, this is uh, the Fa Xiao Fa Tuo, which I'm holding here. This is a 2010 version, but it was originally exported to, to France in, uh, in the 1980s. So um, if you're in France and you come across um, one of these and it looks really old and it has a little sticker on it, most of the original ones have little stickers on the top, um, pick it up. <laughs> Who knows? You might find it in an old uh, Chinese medicine shop there, and you know, you could score real find. But um, yeah, the earliest uh, earliest export to Western countries, um, this baby right here from the Xiaoguan Tea Factory, which is um, a ripe a ripe pour actually. Um, and um, some of the other uh, Xiaoguan. Here's a Xiaoguan cake. As you can see here, um, this is their this is their Xiaoguan um, Tuo Cha logo, um, which is on all their Tuo Cha. And then this is the Tibetan Flame or Bao Yan Bao Yan Pai Bao Yan brand. I call it the Tibetan Flame, and that's perhaps I think this is actually their their earliest um, logo. This is what they used here. Um, Again, we've got, um, this is a Xiaoguan production. This is a, um, a Fei Tai production. So this was produced um, for a Taiwanese company. You can see the, um, the FT right here and the number of cakes that were produced. Um, 68,000 cakes, so not a, not a small quantity here. Which were, Xiaoguan is, um, I believe, produces more raw pour than Monghai Tea Factory. Um, would make them the number one rock or producer uh, in the world, actually. Um, this is a FT production or Fei Tai for, uh, for uh, Taiwanese, the Fei Tai um, company. Um, they have ordered these productions. Um, uh, so this is kind of a special OEM Xiaoguan Tea Factory. You can see Xiaoguan Tea Factory right here, Xiaoguan, those two characters. Um, So again, Xiaoguan Tea Factory. Um, I I like I like a lot of their teas. Um, obviously, I, I do offer them. Um, I think that again, um, Xiaoguan's probably my my top choice in terms of if you wanted to purchase Xiaoguan for resale in the future would be um, would definitely be the the raw teas, um, the Tuo Cha, which are classics, um, and the small size also makes it easier for you to resell them. Um, I do actually like um, quite a few of the Xiaoguan ripe productions. They're they're kind of more camphory. They have a little bit, you know, they have that. They're more of a lean tang uh, style of ripe tea, um, but they have their own very own unique taste to them. I like them, but I don't find that they're probably as popular or accessible as a lot of the Monghai Tea Factory ripe. So again, I. I would I would tend to say that if you're going to invest in Xiaoguan, invest in invest more in in the the raw pours that they produce, and I think that you'll be pretty satisfied with the results. Xiaoguan, um, again, has a very a very solid history, um, very consistent, um, you know, teas coming out of there. You're not going to get any lemons. Of course, I always do recommend that you. <laughs> You taste all the teas and you choose among the best. I mean, Xiaoguan produces 50 to 60 different productions every year, or maybe even more every year. So um, again, when I'm choosing teas from Xiaoguan, I get samples, I'll get a cake or I'll get a 12 each one and I'll drink through them and I'll decide, I'll, you know, these are the ones or this one's good, but it's too expensive for what it is. You know, you always have to be balancing that, um, what you perceive to be, you know, quality versus price ratio, because that can get skewed even with these larger um, producers. Um, 
they will produce something that's, you know, perhaps a little bit better, uh, but much, much more expensive. And, and you have to wait that. Is it worth paying, you know, 2x for something that's 50% better? You know, so again, do your own due diligence when you, um, when you make choices about these teas. Um, the next tea factor I want to talk about um, is, uh, is the Nanjian Tea Factory. Um, the Nanjian Tea Factory was started in 1985. Um, it's based in um, Nanjian Township in the very southern part of, um, of Dali Prefecture. And it borders, um, I believe it borders Yunxian to the west and to the south is the, um, I believe Jingdong, Jingdong County, which is part of um, Pu'er Prefecture, um, previously called the Sima Prefecture. Um, and actually Nanjian is just to the north of the Wuliangshan Mountains. So a lot of the material that they source is from Wuliangshan. A lot of the material they source also from Yunxian. Um, and also locally grown tea in Nanjian County um, as well. Um, Nanjian, um, there actually are a few different producers um, that call themselves Nanjian. We typically offer tea from the Nanjian Tulin Tea Factory. Um, and again, I'll give you a little, um, here's, the, here's the Tulin. There's a famous place in Nanjian um, called, uh, it's, it's kind of, um, it's, uh, it's called Tulin, and it's a, um, I, I guess it translates to dirt forest, but what it is is it's, it's a, a ravine type valley area that's been eroded and has a lot of beautiful, um, has a lot of beautiful kind of like stone pillars and other things like that. If you get a chance to go to Nanjian area, you can you'll see signs for this, and you can go. And, I don't I don't know how much the ticket is. I forget. I went one time, but it's it's, it's beautiful. So um, this is the, and then this is the um, the Feng Huang, the two phoenixes. So sometimes in the center here, you'll see there's um, another company that has um, that instead of this tooling little little picture right here, it's um, it's, it's another picture. There's, I think, two or three different factories. And in fact, they can't actually, um, the Feng Huang, the two phoenix on each side here, they can't actually be, um, they can't actually be copyrighted because they're just um, too old. They're beyond copywriting at this point. Um, so again, you've got uh, a non-GM production here. This is a right production. I do like the right productions. Um, the raw productions can be really good too. Um, Nanjian, has a lot of organic productions. I know that they have um, a fair amount of land um, under organic certification. Um, I don't believe that this is an internationally certified um, uh, organic production, but they do have uh, legitimate tea gardens um, that are organic um, for this company. So I do like to offer their teas. Um, I find that um, they're really affordable um, and the responses that I've gotten from people have been pretty good. Um, and they do increase in value as, as, as time passes and, and, and certain productions sell out after a few years and they become difficult to find. Um, so I do, I do believe they're a good investment. And I, I, I do, um, again, I, I think that their ripe, their ripe teas are a little bit, um, maybe it's just because I'm really picky about raw tea, but I do find that their ripe tea productions are pretty solid. Here's another, again, uh, 703. This is a Nanjian Tooling production, uh, 2013. Um, these are all, you know, less than $20 a cake and can be even cheaper in quantity. So uh, 2002, Nanjian Tuo Cha. Nanjian is also kind of classic. Originally, they were Tuo Cha producers. Um, as you can see, the Phoenix on either side and the Tooling in the middle. Uh, Longhe Tea Factory started in 1995. Um, Longhe is also based in Longhai area, and Longhe teas um, 
again, I've, most of all the best teas that I've had from Long Cliff have all been ripe teas. They, they, um, they do specialize in um, light fermentation or team fa xiao wu dui, which is a light fermentation um, wet piling or from, uh, fermentation process for ripe pour. Um, they tend to um, have a shorter process. They tend to turn the pile more so that it doesn't heat up too much. And uh, a lot of the uh, Langhe teas um, tend to have a little bit more like wo uh, dui or wet pile, fresh, ripe pour kind of taste to them a little bit longer than a lot of the other ripe pours. Because of the light fermentation, it takes longer to fade. However, because of that, it preserves more of the original character of the kind of that sheng, you know, strength in the mouth, the mouth watering effect. Um, so I do like Langha teas, but I'm really picky about them, and I'm really picky about the storage condition because um, if they've been if they've been stored um, incorrectly, they they can tend to be a little bit finicky. So I have historically have not carried a lot of Langha teas, but when I find ones that I like, I'm really happy to carry them because I do think that they're unique. Um, again, here's a um, here's a Langha production. Um, from I believe this one's from 2006. Um, this is the uh, this is the Langhe uh, brand right there. Moving on quickly here. Um, I don't want to get have this be too long. Fu Hai, another tea factory that I really um, that I've really come to like their teas. Uh, also a Mung Hai area tea factory. Also started by. Um, people who um, were previously working at the Meng Hai Tea Factory, or Da Yi, as it's called. Um, Fu Hai started out as a CTC um, black tea producer, and also other black teas um, back, back, in the, uh, back in the early 80s. Um, and then in 1998, um, some people kind of, I guess, I don't know if they, um, I'm not entirely sure if they joined the factory or if they took over, but in 1998, um, Fuhai started um, producing ripe pour, and again from people that had brought their knowledge from Wang Tea Factory, and there was um, at that time um, ripe pour, the process of making ripe pour was still very guarded, um, so um, it's really. Um, it really wasn't until the kind of the late 90s that that the fermentation process became uh, it started you know the, the control of the state-owned tea factories over the right pro, uh, poor processing process methods became a little bit more lax and that's when you start to see these new um, tea factories coming up and producing um, producing their own right pours so again 1998 Fuhai um, started in earnest making ripe pour, although um, Fu Hai started in 1983. Uh, again, um, I'm recommending uh, Fu Hai for ripe pours mostly. I have had a few sh um, Sheng pours from Fu Hai and, and they've been pretty good, but again, um, uh, they're not good enough compared to Meng Hai Tea Factory Xiaoguan to really, for me to really recommend them and carry them. But I do carry um, some full high ripe teas, and I do, I do recommend them. Let's see if I have an example here. This is one of the classic. Um, this is one of the classic seven five seven uh, seven five seven six, which is basically their version of a seven five seven two. Um, the six at the end there refers to refers to Fuhai Tea Factory. So again, this is their version of the 7572 ripe cake. This is a 2006 version here, and um, it's pretty solid. Um, they have their own taste, uh, different from Mong Hai. I believe a lot of the differences in um, Mong Hai um, area teas that have been fermented is how they select the tea, um, how they how they tweak the the wo dui, um, wet piling process. Um, typically the degree of fermentation that they decide that they want to get out of the tea, and then also the water that they use to keep the tea wet. Um, I know that uh, Meng Hai Tea Factory, supposedly there is a well that they have on their property, which um, they pull out some very, very sweet, soft water um, that I've heard makes 
uh, is one of the elements in Wong Hai Tea Factory's um, ripe teas being uh, having the kind of profile and the flavor that, that they do. So um, again, it's interesting that these different um, tea factories like um, like Langhe, Fu Hai, and um, Xinghai, which I'm going to get to in a moment, all in the Monghai area, all pretty much um, taking their tech, their technology, their Wodoi technology from Monghai Tea Factory. But um, the result isn't exactly the same. You know, it's, you know, in fact, Monghai Tea Factory has um, never had another tea factory reproduce um, their taste. So part of it's blending, again, part of it's their wet piling process, part of it's the water they use, part of it's um, the degree of fermentation. So um, again, it's interesting to see all these differences between these tea factories. You'd think, oh, well, they're all from Longhai, they're all going to be pretty much the same. But in fact, they're not. Um, of course, storage also, um, you know, after after being pressed, the storage makes a, makes a difference in the outcome of the tea too. So. Finally, we're going to talk about um, Xinghai Tea Factory, which um, I'm carrying more and more of. Um, here's the Xinghai Tea Factory, and this is their um, this is their logo. This is also their logo here, um, and in the center here, this is the Xinghai logo. Xinghai um, started in 1985. It was called the Monghai Budui Tea Factory. 1985 Budui is like the army. It was the Monghai Army Tea Factory. Um, in 1985, then 2000, in 2000, the name was changed to Xinghai. And then officially the brand Xinghai, the logo, which I showed you there in 2002 was established. Um, the owner, uh, and manager of the, um, of the Xinghai tea factory is Zhang, Zhang Jianli, uh, a woman who, uh, worked for Mohai tea factory for more than 20 years. And, um, in, I believe in 2000 came to, uh, Xinghai Tea Factory purchased it, took it over, and um, started producing some really solid uh, ripe teas. So, um, yeah. Um, and then, actually, we was, I'm going to cover Mongku uh, Rongshu Tea Factory in the next video. This is getting pretty long. We're going to keep going, um, just talking about the different tea factories, uh, what they produce. Um, what's good to get from them, what's maybe not good to get from them. Um, and then finally I'll summarize um, kind of how I would how I would spend your $10,000. Uh, this guy's kind of like uh, fantasy football, right? You get to, you get to kind of have a simulated uh, investment uh, in what teas you would purchase for storage and eventually for resale. So we'll talk a little bit more of that about that uh, in the next video. This one's gotten pretty long. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, do send them to me. Um, I will get to them eventually and um, maybe I'll just answer them directly in email if they're short questions. But um, um, one and all, send your questions over and uh, I'll do my best. Thanks.